So today we are going to start a new series of lecture about the cardiac vector and the vectorial analysis. We are going to discuss what is basically a cardiac vector and how the vectorial analysis is done to calculate the resultant vector of the heart which will help in reading the ECG and uh, which will also help in determining different types of pathologies and different types of conditions that affect the heart. So while we have already discussed the uh, different types of leads that are used, the 12 leads, the lead 1, the lead 2, the lead 3, AVL, AVR, AVF and the chest leads, it is now important to discuss the vector because the vector analysis helps interpret the different types of changes that occur in the chest leads the the bipolar limb leads and the augmented limb leads so to start when we have already discussed that the heart basically get depolarized with the help of sinus node the sinus node which is present at the top of the heart it spreads a depolarization wave which spreads through some uh, special fibers towards the uh, apex of the heart so the sinus node it spreads the spark it's uh, it that electric current that spreads to uh, through all the heart but basically it initially starts the depolarization process through the septum of the heart the septum of the heart basically it separates the different cavities of the heart and this is the first portion which get depolarized when this portion get depolarized negativity gets outside of this portion you see when this portion has been depolarized negative charge has come out of this uh, this uh, septum so this portion has started getting depolarized while the remaining heart is not depolarized yet but this depolarization wave which normally starts with the septum it goes down and then it comes back towards the base of the heart this is the back of the heart back this is the base of the heart and here is the apex of the heart. When this depolarization process is spreading through the heart, the electric current, the electric current is going in all the direction. It is going upward, it is going rightward, it is going leftward, it is going downward, it is going here, it is going there. These electric impulses are going all around the heart. But the mean direction of the depolarization process it is from the base of the heart towards the apex of the heart if we combine all these small arrows small arrows here small arrow here small arrow here small arrow here small arrow here if we combine all these small arrows which are small vectors which are representing the direction of depolarization process we will get a large mean vector which will be the resultant vector of all these small vectors so that will be the resultant vector and the instant the time at which we will uh, note that uh, vector that at that instant it will be known as the instantaneous mean vector the direction of this vector could be any anywhere like it could be straight this way it could be downward, it could be upward, it could be rightward, it could be leftward. But the instant at which we look at that vector, the instant at which we detect that vector is known as the instantaneous mean vector. In the instantaneous mean vector, it is obtained by summing, by the addition of all these small vectors which are which are formed due to the depolarization process of the heart and the depolarization process basically starts at the base it spreads through the septum and then it reaches the apex but normally when in the normal a normal human being in the normal circumstances in the normal physiological circumstances this vector this vector basically it present at a 59 degree angle normally the normal direction of this resultant vector is 59 degrees and this is known as mean QRS vector so what is basically vector the cardiac vector is basically showing the deep the direction the direction of depolarization process it shows 
from which side the the depolarization process is going and where it is going so normally it is going from a negative side towards the positive side and normally the base of the heart is negative and the apex is positive so the cardiac vector in the normal circumstances is directed from the base towards the apex the time at which it is obtained will be known as the instantaneous it, it will be at that instant at that specific time and that will be known as the instantaneous mean vector and it will be obtained by the addition of all the vectors all the small vectors which are formed due to the depolarization process which because the depolarization process is spreading in all the heart muscle so small vectors will be generated in the heart muscles throughout the heart muscles but when they are added up it will make the instantaneous mean vector and normally in normal heart in the normal physiological condition this vector is known as mean qrs vector and it is present at a 59 degree angle with negative charge at the base and positive charge at the apex of the heart and the length the length of this vector basically it it shows the voltage of the depolarization process so normally the depolarization process starts uh, in the septum it spreads downward through the septum then it goes through the uh, endocardium through the endocardial surface and then it comes out to and goes towards the base so normally the direction of the the vector is downward but when this activity is going toward the base so that this depolarization process come here and it returns to the to the outer surface at that very moment the direction of this vector also changes slightly at the end of the depolarization process so that is the starting lecture the starting video about the vectorial analysis the resultant vector the instantaneous mean vector and the mean qrs vector in the coming lectures we will discuss how different factors will influence the direction of this resultant or this mean qrs vector and how with the help of ecg or with the help of changes in the shape and direction of this vector we can determine different types of pathologies so thanks a lot for watching the video